yesterday we discussed um, the situation with uh, Inter Miami uh, getting involved in the Club World Cup at the end of this season. Infantino on the field of play saying, Miami, you're welcome. Come and join us. But now we read this morning in the back of the mail, Barcelona to play a league game in the USA. Now, we knew this was coming. La Liga appear to have stolen a march on the Premier League by lining up one of their fixtures to be played in the US. And that fixture is going to be played a few days before Christmas Day, December the 22nd. And it's a big one. Barcelona against Atletico Madrid. But Messrs Keegan, Jensen and Hope in the mail tell us, Premier League insiders insist they have no plans to take a competitive fixture across the Atlantic. But eyebrows have been raised and the number of clubs following the development. So La Liga are going to do it. And it's a big one. It's not with all due respect, Hetafe against Alaves. No. It's Barcelona against Atletico Madrid. It's a matter of time, is it not, before a Premier League game is played over there? Um, Probably. I mean, oh, I, w- I right. would like it not to be. I don't think there's a necessity for it to be. I mean, when we ask the question, are the Spanish League and people like Javier Tebas hypocrites? Well, of course he's a hypocrite. He's a, he's a walking embodiment of what a hypocrite looks like. Wanted the Premier League job, couldn't get it, and then spends his entire time peeing on the Premier League. Talks about the Premier League and its financial transactions and forgets that the biggest financial transactions are done in his ridiculous league where they pay £200 million for footballers. So he is a hypocrite. But he's a hypocrite, and you've got to love him because he's protecting his own space. Now, when I was in America and, and talking to the MLS and talking to US soccer, the, the the regulations have been overturned. FIFA's regulation have been overturned, which prohibited the, the provision of domestic games being played in overseas t- territory. They'd been challenged by um, relevant sports agency, which is Charlie Stilentano was involved with. Yes, yeah. Um, and ultimately... That's a, a US partner. A, a change in the landscape. But the feeling that I've got from both the MLS and the US soccer is they don't want it. They don't want it. There's no benefit to them. What is the benefit to US soccer to have, you know, cock of the walk European sides coming into their domestic game and showing them how poor their football is? And ultimately, it achieves nothing but an opportunity for the European sides to develop some more commercial revenue, some more brand associated opportunities, and very little, I think, for US soccer. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. There's a needs must scenario with the European leagues because they cannot keep up with the economic powerhouse that is the Premier League. They get nowhere near it. They're not even the same zip code of it to, to coin an Americanism. So I can understand why they feel they need to go on tour and take their clubs on tour. And I think that ultimately, at some point, tragically, we might find ourselves in a situation where the Premier League feels the necessity to do the same but thing. I don't understand why you think it's tragic. You're a commercial man, Simon. You know a deal when you see one. I've been with you when you tell me about the merits of this and merits of that. Yeah. You're full of positivity about commercial deals. It seems to me it's a no-brainer. Barcelona, what, massive support in the US. Atletico Madrid... What, the what, opponents. What, okay, but w- the, the the domestic sides go over there and they play their preseason tours and they engender themselves to the American ownership and ultimately they and so on and so forth. It doesn't alter the landscape of the appetite for the Premier League broadcast deals. They've got a Premier League broadcast deals. It's bells and whistles on it for the American broadcasters. The American broadcasters would like it, but it's not going to stop them from continuing to buy the Premier League rights and the overseas rights deals that we sell in this country. And I don't think you should be. Um, it might increase I, I those rights. I, I don't think you should be sitting on your laurels. No, I concur. No, with that view that if you if you don't if you stand still, then eventually you'll start going backwards. But everybody wants a bit of the American market. If you're in business, you want the American market because of the scale. You and pulled scope. up trees when you were doing business and doing it because, at the highest level because, in the US. And, and if I'd have done it in America, I would have made even more money because of the scale and scope. And when I was over there last time, I was looking going. You know, really, the opportunities in this country are phenomenal. You've only got to be half average to be really successful. I mean, into Miami is a you know a tin pot stadium. Right in, in a in the back end of. Miami. So what pitch uh, Barcelona Atletico Madrid? What an advertisement for La Liga. But the, La Liga in its in, in and of itself doesn't have the overseas broadcasting deals that the Premier League has. It doesn't have the quite the same feel about the Premier League's jeopardy. And I get it. I actually concur with the view that the only thing great about the Premier League and the only thing English about it is the fact that it's situated in this country. Everything else about it, from foreign ownership to foreign investment, you know, to the to broadcast is owned by a foreign yeah. by, a, by American business. Yeah. So I get it, but there's something about the, the Harlem Globetrotter mentality, the running after it, that the Premier League doesn't need to do, whereas other leagues do need to do it. The US partner relevant. I mean, the, the mail says La Liga confirmed last night the US partner relevant were yeah. in talks with FIFA 
Well, they would um, be because they want to monetize it. They, 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 we like the idea. They, they're a tour operator. They're a sports agency. They put on games. They are all object, and they put on various spectacles, and that's where they make their money. So, of course, they're going to have their nose in the trough. I mean, it's eight, eight weeks away from happening. Yeah, and you create critical mass by announcing a game and putting pressure on it. But my, my again, you know, people change and economics change everything. But my feeling. In talking to the MLS and talking to US Soccer when I was over there, was they don't they, they, they don't have a massive ambition for it. Relevant sports will have it, mm. but they're not doing it for the love of sport. Relevant sports are doing it for the love of their of their, uh, their end game. It's their opportunity, happen, isn't it? I mean, you to a degree you're rowing back this morning a bit on it because no, you're, you're I, accepting I, I, that it's going to happen. I don't think they need to do it. The Premier League, two powerhouses I, in Spain are going to do it, and because there's a different dynamic to their leagues and a different reason for them doing it than there is in the Premier League, I accept the fact that if it becomes something that becomes so prevalent. That ultimately, that we are losing something by not doing it. Does it make commercial sense for the Premier League to do it? To what end? If 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 there's if there's a, if there's a, a back end hook to it, which is basically the three or four hundred million dollars, maybe five hundred, I think it is, that the, that the North American broadcast deal becomes a billion dollars if you bring your sides over there. Well, that discussion needs to happen, but that discussion isn't happening. And the broadcast deals and the Premier League broadcasting deals, their overseas deals eclipse the domestic deals that the Spanish get. Mm. So the Spanish need to take their product. The Italians need to take their product. They need to have a different dynamic. They need to have a European club association designed specifically to find a way to undermine the Premier League because of the powerhouse. You see, in business, you always used to say to me, never let your rival get in first. Ne never let your rival steal a march on you because that is the competitive animal you are but also here we are Simon the expensive. Premier League is like La Liga steal but a march also, also innovation also innovation is expensive and sometimes you wait for the first person if you, if you were the first person out of the gate to go into Man United and join Man United after Ferguson left then you were a fool because you were going to pick up the, the casualty of the Ferguson legacy why don't you let someone else go in there make all the mistakes that they make learn all from them and go in and do it better than they did if that's what you intend to do I mean, the Premier League would be remiss of not looking at the opportunity. Do I want it, is the question. No. Do I think they need to do it? No, I don't think they need to do it. Do you think they will do it? I think inevitably, if the lure of the opportunity becomes so significant, if it's to maintain what you've got, what's the purpose of that? The Premier League is being sold in America, not because Premier League teams are coming over there, not because they've got American owners, but because there's a demand for Premier League football. Right. If you let that, If you let other people develop and get bigger and better and bolder, and are we going to seriously say that um, a couple of games from the Spanish League playing in America is going to enable them to economically put themselves in a position which supersedes the Premier League? If the answer to that is yes, then the Premier League needs to pivot, and it won't pivot on, on the back of commercial... Um, mm. uh, minnows like Richard Masters but they do need to think about the reality of what the next turn of the wheel is for the Premier League and if it is jeopardy then they'll react to it but I mean right your now, chum Javi Tebas is saying it's a mark of respect to US fans oh sod off it would re this would resonate in the American market they do it's for nothing. true it's not a mark of respect for American fans. What a load of old nonsense. It's what, a there, there isn't a massive clamouring amongst Barcelona fans in the US to see, to see them. But it's not a mark of respect. It's a commercial transaction. Let's not dress it up into what it isn't. It isn't anything to do with some it's sentimental... It's a bit of both, really, isn't it? No, it's, it is a commercial exercise in either ensuring that the merchandising and commercial opportunities for these Spanish football clubs that are trying to engineer different commercial opportunities for themselves... I mean, don't forget, Barcelona sold their, their TV rights... They've sold a percentage of their own revenue to be able to meet their current obligations. No surprise that Barcelona might be the first team out of the blocks to try and find some opportunity, given where they've put themselves economically mm. and sold their future rights on their broadcasting studios. Yeah. So, look, I, I, I accept it. I, I understand it. You know, we are in a situation where um, the globalisation of sport and the next turn of the wheel, World Club Championships and all that go with that, that there is going to be a challenge. I, I, I don't anticipate in the next couple of years the English Premier League clubs will be playing there. But, in the next couple of years? No, I don't think so. Barcelona Atletico in eight weeks' time? So what? I'll so be surprised. What? I'll be surprised. Uh, if not this season, certainly next. No chance. I'll be surprised. No chance. You, we, I, Manchester cate, United against Newcastle. Cate, Welcome to Foxborough. Cate, categorically, Massachusetts. The, Prem, the Premier League, I guarantee you, will not be putting a fixture this season. Okay. Got that up. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.